When pregnant beggar enters a car, one woman starts to get suspicious and follows her. She couldn't take her eyes off the woman. Could it be true? Was she trying to fool her all along? So many thoughts were racing through her head. Maybe she was just being lured, but maybe she was also in danger. But when the beggar agreed to sit into the car, she knew that something was wrong. She decided to go after her and find out the truth, but little did she know that she discovered a web of lies. It was just another day for Melissa Smith, and she was doing errands in her hometown of San Diego, California. Every time she went to the local grocery store, she would see the same friendly faces, but there was also another person she knew she would come across, the panhandler. However, on that very day, Melissa thought something was off. She trusted her gut instinct and started investigating. While she was putting the bags into her car, Melissa saw that the beggar and her baby boy were leaving their spot. However, what happened next had Melissa reaching for her phone. Since the poor woman had to live on the streets, she decided to claim a good spot. During the day, she would sit in a small spot just outside the East Lake Village Center, a shopping plaza that contained restaurants, grocery stores, salons, dentists, vintage stores, florists, clothing departments, jewelry stores, and sweet shops. People would walk around all day long and their pockets would be full of change. The beggar knew that someone would be willing to give her some money, especially once they noticed her baby bump. But she never thought that someone would be keeping tabs on her. California is known for Hollywood, impressive architecture, national parks, beautiful weather, but also for a high number of homeless people. But sometimes people would just pretend to be homeless and Melissa never allowed these con artists to fool her. But every time she went grocery shopping, she would see the same woman. I felt bad. There's a pregnant lady with a little boy who is down on her luck, she explained. But she never expected that her gut feeling would lead to a shocking revelation. Every time she went shopping, Melissa would notice the same woman wearing stained clothes and standing in the scorching sun for hours. Usually she was alone, but sometimes a strange man would keep her company. Melissa assumed it was her husband. The woman became well-known in the area, and shoppers would frequently give her sandwiches, drinks, and some change. The woman managed to stir the emotions of the public. However, an additional member would help with their collection. Melissa was unable to contain her curiosity. Melissa felt sorry for the beggar. As if being homeless wasn't hard enough, the woman also had a family to feed. Every time she went shopping, Melissa would pass this lady, and this lasted for two months straight. Melissa thought that the woman must have been so desperate to stand in the sun without any food or water for hours. To make things worse, she was, only, she was also visibly pregnant. However, Melissa still thought there was something suspicious. It seemed that the pregnant woman was experienced and that she knew what to do to get everyone's attention. She was well aware that her situation would make everyone feel sorry for her, so she came up with a perfect story an expecting mother fights for survival for her young son. In addition, she would also hold a cardboard sign with please help scrawled across in black ink right above her bump. If the people didn't feel sorry for her with her little boy, they would feel sorry for her unborn child. Maybe the lady was telling the truth, but Melissa wanted to make sure. Melissa lived close to the East Lake Village Center and she would often do her shopping before the after-school rush but one day she had a craving for a fresh smoothie. It was almost closing time and the beggar was missing from her spot. Melissa felt a little bit worried and hoped that the woman was fine. All of a sudden, Melissa noticed that she was low on gas, so she decided to stop by a gas station located right across the road. As she was stepping out of her car, Melissa noticed something unusual that would lead to an investigation. Melissa noticed the homeless lady standing at the side of the shopping complex. She was trying to get a few more pennies before finally going home. All of a sudden, a vehicle appeared around the corner and raced towards her. There were so many questions going through Melissa's head. Who was the driver? Was the beggar in trouble? And where did her little son go? But as she observed the car for a few minutes, Melissa started becoming very suspicious. Was she giving this too much thought? After waiting to see what would happen next, Melissa became very confused. The driver was the beggar's partner. That's not what surprised her the most. It was the car he was driving. 
The man was driving a Mercedes-Benz, a luxury car well known for its high-quality leather interiors and expensive price tags. Melissa was determined to act. Little did she know that she would make the headlines. They were leaving, and I noticed they went into a Mercedes-Benz. I thought, wow, a Mercedes-Benz? Melissa revealed. To make things worse, the car was expensive and also spotless, as if it was brand new. Without thinking, Melissa jumped into her car and started following the couple. She decided to record everything on her phone. When she caught up with them, they were laughing. Lo and behold, they were in front of us. Here they are counting money, laughing. Their little boy is not in a car seat or a seatbelt. He's in the front seat with them, Melissa explained. She was so angry and she didn't want to let them get away with this. She knew she had to notify the public, but she had no idea what else she was about to reveal. Melissa followed the man and woman, and she was surprised to see them stop in front of another shopping center. It seemed that these two had planned everything out. Then the woman stepped out of the car and started doing her thing. She sits there with the sign, he goes and parks the Mercedes. They put up the sign, and not less than five minutes, here she is getting money from all these people, Melissa explained. All this time, she knew that there was something off with the beggar, but little did she know that this discovery would involve the authorities. She was just scratching the surface of something much deeper. Melissa was so mad at the beggar, and she started taking pictures of her and her son. Or was he her son at all? However, the couple spotted Melissa soon. They were enraged, and they started yelling and screaming at her. The woman even grabbed a huge rock. Next thing I know, she picked up this big boulder, Melissa said. I don't know if pregnant people can do that, but it was pretty big over her head and coming at me with this rock. Another woman was close by, and as soon as she noticed what was going on, she decided to call the cops. This made the beggar grab the little boy and start running away. However, Melissa wasn't willing to give up yet. Melissa was not willing to let these imposters get away that easily. She posted all the photos on her social media accounts and contacted the local news station. She had to make sure that the locals knew about this deception and prevent more people from giving money to the beggar. The news station was very curious and they wanted to find out if there was more to the story. So thanks to Melissa's photos and videos, they were able to run the plates of the car. It turned out that the car was registered to a female, but the address was undisclosed. And this is just the beginning of the story about the fake paupers. Soon, many journalists became obsessed with the story. They were able to trace the lady's whereabouts to Encinitas Heights Apartments. The residents of the apartment paid a monthly rent of $2,500. As soon as the word got out, magazine, radio, and paper journalists went to the address, knocked for days, but no one answered. The lights were off for days, and no one entered or exited the apartment. Then something else happened. A new couple moved in, and the couple who lived there previously had left during the night without any notice. Melissa was amazed by the amount of attention this story was receiving. Melissa shared this shocking story online and backed everything up with the pictures and videos. Many journalists contacted her to get more information and share the story themselves. I feel bad. Don't give these people money. They don't need it. They're driving a Benz, she pleaded. The residents couldn't believe this. They were shocked to see that someone would use a small child and pregnancy to prey on the pity of others. A few days later, journalists would receive a phone call that made them storm to a new scene. The beggar was spotted. One young lady named Rebecca heard the story about the panhandler while driving to one shopping center. There, she recognized the woman from Melissa's videos. She immediately left a comment under Melissa's post and posted a picture as proof. As soon as this news reached Emily Valdez, she gathered her crew and they were on their way to the shopping center. They wouldn't let the panhandler slip away again. Valdez followed the tip and started searching for the woman in the shopping center. She came across several pregnant ladies, but none of them were beggars. But when she finally came across the woman from Melissa's posts, she was shocked. Valdez was sure that the panhandler was pregnant, but two days after Melissa discovered the truth, this woman was in another shopping center holding a baby, but Valdez didn't let this stop her. Valdez approached the woman and pointed the microphone toward her. Is this you, begging? Valdez asked as the crew was recording everything. Valdez reached for her phone so she could show the beggar Melissa's video. 
The woman stared at the phone, then at Valdez, and then she looked at the camera. I don't speak English, she whispered. Her little boy tugged at her jumper. He was certainly the boy from Melissa's photos. But then, as Valdez began to follow the woman up the street, the beggar's husband showed up. Keep the camera rolling, Valdez said. She was willing to do anything for a good story. The man tried to keep the journalists away from his family, but they wouldn't give up. The journalists followed the family up the street around the corner and watched them pile into the back of a minivan. The vehicle had dealer plates and Valdez was convinced that she caught them. She ran facial recognition on the woman from the video and the woman she had met the same day. She was glad to see the results, they were an 80% match. Valdez then observed the woman's partner. There was something about his reaction that made her think there was more to uncover, and her hunch was right. The mysterious man said something in Spanish to Valdez. However, he whispered something to his partner in a different language. Valdez couldn't understand a word he said, but she was willing to do everything in her power to reveal it. Later on, the comment would expose the very truth this man was trying to hide. Valdez downloaded the footage, placed the headphones on her head, and pressed play. She listened to the words over and over again, but she couldn't identify the language. But she was lucky enough to receive a call from an expert. Leslie Albright is a retired detective, and she came across Valdez's short interview with the suspects. She was a crucial member of the San Diego Police Department during the investigation of underground crime rings. After working for 25 years, Leslie became a specialist. The story had Leslie thinking. She knew that she had heard that language before, but she couldn't remember where. Then it hit her. Leslie realized that the woman was not an ordinary beggar and that this story was more sinister than it seemed. Valdez wasn't the only one searching for the beggar, but the rest of the internet as well. But they didn't have a clue that a scam was about to be exposed. There was much more to this story than any of them estimated. For the past few years, people started noticing a problem in their community. California was portrayed as a city of hip culture and lavish lifestyles. But there was one big problem everyone ignored, and it was getting worse by the day. One Reddit user finally wanted to expose the truth, but doing this was risky. Leslie devoted her career to catching criminals, and, usually, beggars aren't involved in any offenses. But the language the mysterious man was speaking made her think that there was more to the story. She watched Valdez's footage again and recognized the language. The man was speaking Romani, and they had a common method to dismiss the press. What else was this couple hiding? Detective Leslie realized that the couple was involved in an organized crime ring she was investigating for years. This group started their ring right after their illegal entry into the U.S. Sadly, they committed crimes daily. The members of the group lived in inexpensive apartments and owned multiple vehicles. This allowed them to scam so many people. Leslie shared her conclusion with Valdez. The man and woman from the footage were more likely to be co-workers than couples, and the pregnancy was just a scam. There were even more layers to this story. For a long time, authorities were trying to catch these perpetrators and bring them to justice, but they were smart enough not to stay in one spot for too long. As soon as they notice that someone is onto their act, they pack their bags and flee. Unsurprisingly, the beggars Melissa caught on tape did the same thing, and just when it seemed that everything was over, one man stepped in and provided some information. This could help the authorities find out more about the perpetrators. This unknown man revealed some information that even put his own life in danger. Moreover, he shared all the details on Reddit. I had a friend of a friend tell me that they knew them, and that they are just a hustling pair of con artists whose families con their way into the country. But he didn't stop there. He even claimed that the woman was forced to do all these things. The man was afraid for his safety, and he deleted his profile shortly after sharing this information. What could be the consequences if his identity was revealed? After this, more and more information started surfacing. It turns out that the woman would often stuff her clothes with foam and pretend that she's pregnant. Thanks to the fake belly, she would earn more than $500 a day. But she was not the only one who did this. When it comes to crime rings, men often lead their operations. They promise desperate women shelter and food in exchange for some work. 
the women are dispatched every morning and collected in the evening. Of course, the profit isn't distributed fairly. Those who run everything lead lavish lifestyles while others don't. They'll use the babies, children, any way they can. The children will not go to school because their job and their future is the family business, Leslie revealed later. These children usually don't receive any education and crime becomes everything they know. People should know there's plenty of service and organizations that exist to help people, and especially for women with children. They're taking advantage of them all as well as scamming people at the parking lot entrances. Neither of them are reporting the money they're making from her begging, and both are claiming poverty to get state and federal assistance. The anonymous Reddit user also added, But then he started receiving threatening phone calls before removing all traces of himself online. The informant had one last thing to add. They might be up and trying this scam again, or it might be another woman. Either way, call the cops on them. Make sure to tell the dispatch that they're the BMW scammers, so they're identified and the state can start the proper deportation proceedings against them. Don't help any of them or give money to any of the panhandlers you might see. The Reddit user's warning was clear. Of course, Leslie's former team is still working to catch those who run operations like this one. And let's not forget about Melissa. Without her intuition, people would never hear the truth about those beggars. But one question remains. If the police can't catch them, how will they be stopped? Next, the heartwarming short story about a police officer that arrested a woman and she pays him back in the most unexpected way. Most of us are pretty nice people. We are friendly with our colleagues and we're warm with the people that we care about, our friends, our family, and other loved ones. And most of us would go to great lengths to help these people and protect them from harm. But how far would you go to help someone you barely know? Or even more importantly, would you come to the rescue of someone who had once arrested you? This is the story of one woman who showed unbelievable generosity in the face of her own struggles. The late 2000s were a bad time for Jocelyn James. You could safely say that these years were the worst of her life. The native of Franklin, Alabama had gone off the rails and was involved in drugs and petty crimes, being arrested more than 15 times in five years. She remembers those dark days saying, I was just living a really bad life, doing a lot of really bad things that I shouldn't have had no business doing, and I was just a really lost person. But how did this young woman end up here? Life hadn't always been so bad for Jocelyn. Rather, it was a series of sad events that led her down this tragic path to addiction and crime. Things started to go wrong for her when doctors discovered that she had cancerous cells growing on her ovaries. She underwent surgery to remove the cells, but they continued to grow. This worrying cycle continued until she had a total of six surgeries, but in the end, a hysterectomy was the only way to completely stop the cancer from growing. Though it might stop the cancer, it would start something else for Jocelyn, something just as bad. Throughout her series of surgeries, Jocelyn was in incredible pain, so the doctors had given her a prescription for opiate pain relievers. While opiates can be great for managing pain, they are also very addictive. It was this addiction that would give Jocelyn a whole new set of problems. Once the final surgery was finished, she was no longer eligible for the medication. But by this point, she was well and truly hooked. Without access to prescription medication, she turned to illegal methods of getting the relief she was now addicted to. Until this point, the Alabama woman had been living a relatively normal life. But now things began to go in a seriously bad direction. She later told reporters, I became an IV user. I was shooting up about 16 times a day. If the drug problem wasn't enough, she turned to crime to support her habit. She was committing break-ins, receiving stolen property, and was caught in possession of stolen credit cards. Between 2007 and 2012, she said, I lost my car, lost my job, my license, my self-respect. Of course, after being arrested so many times, Jocelyn became well-known to local police. And, in fact, her troubled lifestyle landed her on Alabama's most wanted list. She'd fallen a long way from the woman she once was. One of the police officers who had arrested her on several occasions was Terrell Potter. 
who recalls she was out running crazy, stealing and doing drugs and things she shouldn't be doing. I locked her up a couple of times. He didn't know what to do to help her. She would have to find her own way out of her spiral. The cycle of arrest and release continued for years, and it was hard to believe it would ever end. Terrell describes how he had seen her again and again. She would almost make it out, but yet she would keep falling back into the same pattern. Eventually, it caught up with her. Many people would hold a grudge against the police officers who had arrested them, even if they knew they were in the wrong for committing a crime. But Jocelyn now credits these arrests with finally getting her out of the hole that she had found herself in. Strangely enough, things really began to change for Jocelyn when she found herself in jail in 2013. Although she had been arrested so many times before, it was serving a six-month sentence that was the turning point in her life. She had seen herself on TV as a most wanted in her county and said to herself, I'm tired. She called the sheriff and turned herself in. Halfway through her stay, she said she found the courage to kick her drug habit. She explains, I literally asked God to please take that urge away from me, and on March 18th, he delivered me. And I promise you, I have not thought about getting high since. But would she be able to keep up her sobriety? By the time she left jail, Jocelyn was determined to make a fresh start. I was sick of living that life, and I wanted to do something different, she said. I'm perfect, I'm healthy, and I had no idea that I was that healthy. Without the addiction, it was easier for her to leave her days of drugs and criminal activity far behind her. Or so she thought. Little did she know that just a few years later, she would be forced to confront her past. Fast forward to 2019 and Jocelyn was still clean. But one night she was laying in bed, scrolling through Facebook, she saw a post that brought her face to face with her old life. It was from police officer Terrell Potter, the very same officer who had arrested her at some of her lowest points. He had since retired from the police force, but not long after his retirement, he found out some very serious news. His kidney was failing. In fact, it was only functioning at 5%. Kidney failure isn't something anyone can live with. The only option is to have it replaced. In most cases, people who require kidney transplant would ask their family. For an organ to be accepted by the body, the donor needs to be the right match, and this is more common with blood relations. Sadly for Terrell Potter, none of his relatives were found to be suitable. Now on the public registry, he was facing a wait of up to eight years for a transplant, a time he would probably not survive. He and his family knew they couldn't wait, and that they had to do something else if he was to survive. After being told that the wait for a donor would be so long, Terrell and his family set about doing things their own way. We began praying about getting the right kidney, he said. We were looking all over the southeast. His daughter had the idea to put his story on social media, and soon the post began to spread locally. Terrell felt confident, stating, I said, I don't feel like I have to wait that long. I feel like that there is something out there. Little did he know just what was waiting for him. It turns out Terrell was right. There was something out there, and that something, or rather someone, was Jocelyn James. Upon seeing the post on her Facebook, she instantly recognized the man who had arrested her numerous times during that troubled period in her life. Jocelyn didn't hesitate at all. For many people, seeing this man would have brought up bad memories, but her reaction was quite different. She recalls of that day, I just threw my phone down and the Holy Spirit told me right then that I had that man's kidney, but would her feeling prove correct? While her willingness to donate a kidney was one thing, it still remained to be seen whether Jocelyn was a suitable donor or not. After visiting the hospital to go through a series of tests, the pair waited anxiously for the results. And it was good news, Jocelyn was a perfect match for Terrell. In fact, the doctor said that they had never had a better match for a kidney transplant. Who would have thought that after looking far and wide, the perfect kidney would be just a few miles away? On July 21, 2019, Terrell and Jocelyn went through transplant surgery at Vanderbilt University Hospital in Nashville. Even with the confirmation that they were a good match, there was still some risk involved, as organ donations can sometimes be rejected by the body. 
Unfortunately, Terrell's run of incredible luck continued and there was no complications. All the numbers were great, he said. It started working from the time it was put in. But how did Jocelyn feel about what she'd just been through? Many people still could not believe that Jocelyn would give up a kidney to someone who was practically a stranger, but had been familiar to her previously in all the wrong ways. But for her, it all made sense. After all those years of abusing her body, she was now able to put it to a very special use. She explained her motivation in an interview after the surgery. God restored me from the inside out, and to be able to give another human a kidney to extend his life is really rewarding. Of course, after going through such an unusual experience together, the pair have formed a very special bond. It's made a great relationship and a bond between us that can go forever. There's no doubt about that, Terrell admits. Her giving me a kidney, it extended my life. He also said that he considers her to be one of his daughters, declaring, I feel like she's one of my girls. I had two daughters and I feel like she's just one of them. A far cry from throwing her in a jail cell. So how does Jocelyn feel about this new extended family? She was just all full of praise, stating, I love him, I love his wife, and his daughter, and it's so unexplainable, like you can't, you can't explain it. Being told that Terrell considered her to be like one of his own daughters was also something of a special feeling for Jocelyn, who revealed, I don't have a father figure in my life, so I just think it's pretty awesome. About her, Terrell added, See, you don't just throw people away. When people make mistakes and they do things that aren't right and everything, we are too quick a lot of times to judge people. You probably think that donating a kidney is the only good deed that anyone would ever need to do, but it turns out that Jocelyn has been giving back to the community since she set her own life back on the straight and narrow. She runs a nonprofit organization called Place of Grace. Based on her own struggles with opioids and rehabilitation, she helps people battling an addiction to get help and counseling, and eventually to get them into treatment centers. The course of Jocelyn's life has been an unusual one, filled with many ups and downs, from her descent into addiction and criminal behavior, to her rehabilitation, and of course her incredibly generous deed for Officer Terrell Potter. And along the way, she's not only helped herself, but helped so many others. I want people to realize that there is help out there for them, she says. It doesn't matter what happens in your life, you can always turn it around. Jocelyn and Terrell's is just one of so many inspiring stories of people helping each other in unexpected ways. Just like how Terrell's job as a police officer helped Jocelyn get back on the straight and narrow, the story of Officer Zimmerman and Andrella Jackson shows how one person going the extra mile for another can change lives.